going here? K5! I just sent Mr. Stanley Crud away. I said, Get back in your hole! I'm going to show you something here. Yeah, I'm out there. I'm going to show you something here. My right rear tire valve popped off in the summer, and I thought someone had knifed my tire, but in fact, the valve stem was probably a made in China one, I forget now. And it just fell apart and popped out of my rim. So, I've done a whole bunch of repairs to this T Ruck, and I said, you know, something that didn't snow today. So, let's see if I pull this valve off. Look at that. This thing, granted, does stay outside, but there was a huge recall on Chinese or foreign made valve stems, and this one looks like it's about to fail, just like the one on my right rear. So, I'm curious, now that I've got the time and my old Coates machine that's turned into a shelf. Let's see what it takes to break this valve stem off. I think it's going to just let go if I tug on it a little bit. Yeah, not letting go that easy. I was going to take the air out of it. I figured, well, let's get a little bit more of a show going on since it's not minus 30 degrees here. And I'm not trying to start my two cylinder John Deere with my Japanese car that started up. <laughs> Nope. This thing wasn't going to let go, Mr. Crud, with two Ds. But it's friggin' rotten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's rotten. Rotten to the core. So I was worried when I was hauling some heavy equipment with it last week. The tire was low on air. I tried to fill it up, and I looked at that valve. I said, if I touch that, I was only going a couple of miles. I had the trailer overloaded with three hoists. I bought three hoists from the shop that was closing up. I was closing up and retiring, and I had that trailer loaded, and that truck was loaded, but couldn't put air in it, and it made it two or three miles. Well, this thing ain't letting go that easy. Nope. She wasn't in imminent failure mode. Do you remember my video that I made a few months ago on the crash of that 2000 Ford Excursion limo in Schoharie. I've been emailing back and forth with one of the reporters at the Albany Times Union. And let me tell you, there's something really fishy with that limo. I looked at the pictures with Mr. Stanley C. Crud, and the limo was hardly demolished at all. And how would 18 people, 17 passengers and a driver, all young in their 20s and 30s, how would they all die when the vehicle was not demolished? You'd think that the back bumper would be wrapped around the engine block and the state won't release it to the National Traffic Highway Safety Administration or Bureau NTSB and they're checking to see the condition of the transmission and the torque converter and somebody wrote some some witness testified that they heard the vehicle go by down the hill it stopped and it started back up again and the backup beeper was going maybe it had a backup beeper and the engine was roaring like a jet and it gets to the bottom of the hill, maybe the driver put it in reverse, maybe he was in low gear, or maybe he was in reverse to try and slow the thing down because the brakes failed. And... If you remember my video, I think there's a cover-up. I know I'm getting way off topic here, but it's just interesting that I'm going back and forth with this reporter from the Times Union to kind of figure out why all the people died. Maybe there was some involvement, government undercover involvement, and they wanted to kill the owner of the limo company who was an informant or his son, and by accident, the dummy cut the brake line on the limo instead of the personal car that he drove. Just some random thoughts. Let's go see what Mr. Stanley is doing over here. Oh, you want me to get underneath those and heat those up? Yeah, I'm just getting the, the nipple loosened up and the... Yeah, I'll get them. The hey, wait, I can just... You don't mind if I take your drive shaft? Oh, look at that. It's not worn at all like mine. But you could have the rust. I just want the drive shaft. I don't want the rust. This is longer than this. Yeah, well, I'll shorten it. Mine's longer than this. <laughs> that's what you said to the sailor. <laughs> well, that's what the two guys, the two sailors said to the you know what. Anyway. Oh, I got two clocks. One's two minutes slow and one's two minutes fast. And this one's got salt, salt, salt. What else can I show you? Nothing else. I got gloves on and they're one size too small. And I gotta get my wool wax ready, but I gotta fix the turbo weasel. 
I'm going to put this tire on the machine and take all this crap away. Just a junk collector. I don't know how people stay nice and organized. I'll never be organized. I've just got stuff everywhere. Stuff here, stuff there. Screwdriver on the ground, crowbar. Ding! It's a made in USA crowbar. Bang, bang, boom. Everything's flying. You like these jack stands? Those are the old ones made in USA. The new ones are made in China, but they're cast, not stamped, folded steel. I'm going to pull that tire off the rim, just the top part of it, and stick a brand new made in USA valve in. Here's your Venturi effect, carburetor icing, frost on the valve. Just going to unseat this side of it and pop a new valve in. And I'm going to help Mr. Stanley see crud. We'll fix her up. Yeah, Mr. GPL, GP, GPL, GPL, 87, LS, CS, Sport, John DeLorean. <laughs> he couldn't get his uh, HHR running this morning. Man, brutal, minus 30. <laughs> Same temperature here, except we didn't have the negative in front. I guess we'll be getting it. And this coming week, we're going to be getting rain. <laughs> oh, my, the weather. All right, I got work to do.